QuickBooks Online tutorial, how to use the QuickBooks Online bank feed. If you are a bookkeeper or a business owner, you can pretty much do probably 90% of your bookkeeping inside of the QuickBooks Online bank feed. First, you need to go to quickbooks.com, log in to your QuickBooks account, and then on the left-hand side here, click on transactions, and then select bank transactions. Here, you're going to see all of your bank accounts and your credit card accounts connected to the QuickBooks Online bank feed. If you don't have your accounts already connected or if you need to connect more accounts, all you need to do is click on this button right here. It says link account in the top right hand corner. Just click link account and then you can choose your bank, whether it's Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, QuickBooks Online does support a lot of the different banks and credit cards, so you should be able to connect whatever bank, whatever credit card you have. This pulls all of your transaction data directly into QuickBooks. This makes it very fast and accurate for you to record your transactions. This pulls in information like the date, the description, which is usually derived from the bank detail. If you click on each transaction, you can get a little bit more information. You see here we have the bank detail and we have the amount. Obviously, those are the three things you need to record a transaction. You need the date, bank detail, and the amount. We have here two columns, spent and received. So spent, money going out, received, money coming in. So here we have our checking account, savings account, credit card. If you want to rename your accounts, all you have to do is click this little pencil right here in the top right hand corner of this blue box. Click the pencil, click edit account info, and then you can rename the account, whatever you want to call it. You can disconnect the account right here by checking that box. Just be careful as soon as you click that box and then click save and close it does disconnect the account from your bank feed. Here we have for review. So these are all transactions. I call it lingering in your bank feed. These transactions have not been recorded, which means they have not been added to your books. So they're in limbo. They're lingering in your bank feed for review. If you click on categorized here, you're going to see all of the transactions that you have categorized. Now we have excluded. If for whatever reason you have transactions in your bank feed that are inaccurate, maybe duplicates, or maybe you're doing bookkeeping for this current year and you have transactions in the bank feed from the previous year and maybe you're not doing bookkeeping for the previous year, you can exclude the transactions. And it's nice because you're not necessarily deleting them forever. You're simply excluding them from the bank feed. So they will be stored in here in this excluded tab. Now let's take a look over here on the bottom right of the screen. Here we have, let me just move my face real quick. Here we have a couple options. We can click on this gear icon. I recommend uncheck this box. It'll say add new vendors. Uncheck that box. And then you can click here, show bank details, and this will show all of the bank details instead of the abbreviated version of the description. And then the other option here, you can decide to display 300, 200, 175, or 50 transactions per page. If you have a lot of transactions, maybe you want to choose 300. It's up to you. But I definitely recommend turn off the automation for adding new vendors. And then I always have the payee show up under columns. I don't usually have the check number show up. If you have class tracking enabled, you definitely want to show classes in the bank feed in your columns. Now let's talk about the different ways to record transactions in the QuickBooks bank feed. But before we do that, let's look over here at the left hand side here, we have dates. So we can filter if we're doing this year or last year or last quarter, or we can do a custom date. And then we have the search bar right here. So if we want to search for a particular transaction, then we can just type in a keyword that might show up 
in that transaction, maybe for example, rental, and then we click enter, and then it has all of the transactions that have the word rental in the bank detail. Or we can search for a number. If we search for 800, this will show all the transactions that are for $800. So the search bar is really nice if you're looking for specific transactions or another idea here, we can search for rental again and then we have this A1 rental company. So what we can do is we can select multiple transactions, select multiple transactions. They're both from this A1 rental company and we can record multiple transactions all at once. So we can search for the word rental, select both of these transactions, click edit, and then here we're just categorizing transactions. This is the bulk majority of our job as a bookkeeper. So here, what is it? Is it an expense or a transfer? I usually always choose expense and then the vendor. Who did you pay? In this example, we're paying A1 rental and then the account, it could be anything. This is where you need to, to figure out what did you buy? This is probably equipment rental. And then tags, I don't use tags. Customers, if you're working with somebody who's utilizing project tracking or class tracking, maybe you'll have a customer or a class. And then if you don't see in this example, A1 rental, it's not showing up. We can search, we can search the word rental only Ellis equipment rental shows up, which means we need to add a one rental. You can do almost all of your bookkeeping from the QuickBooks online bank feed. We can add new chart of accounts. We can add new vendors. Let me show you how to add a vendor. All you do click add new. Let me move my face so you can see what I'm talking about. Make sure this says vendor right here. And for the company, we can just type in a one rental that's all we need that's all the information we need if it's a person obviously you're going to write first name last name you don't need you don't need any of this you certainly can add as much detail as you want you don't need their address unless you're using quickbooks to print checks or if they are a 1099 independent contractor if they are then you want to get their address enter it here into quickbooks you can add attachments, you can add their W-9. And then finally, if they are a 1099 independent contractor, make sure you get their W-9 and fill out either their, their business tax ID or their social security number and then check this box, track payments for 1099. That's all the information we need. A1 rental is the payee or the vendor. The account is equipment rental. Apply and accept. That's it. It's as easy as that to record transactions. If you are a bookkeeper, this is 90% of your job, recording transactions in the QuickBooks bank feed. The other option here, we have a credit card account. So this is a great example. Sometimes you are, there's a big difference here, and I'm going to be very particular with the words that I use. You can add a transaction from the QuickBooks bank feed, or you can match a transaction from the QuickBooks bank feed. So if you add it, you're just straight up adding a transaction for the first time from the QuickBooks bank feed into QuickBooks. But here you can see that there's one match found. So here we're going to match instead of add. And this occurs whenever you manually create transactions in QuickBooks. I can't tell you, I can't express enough how important this is. I see this get messed up all the time. If you have a manual entry in QuickBooks, you simply want to match the transaction in the QuickBooks bank feed to the manual entry in QuickBooks. The same concept applies if you have a third party software connected to your QuickBooks account. They also might be manually creating transactions in QuickBooks. This happens a lot with accounts receivable or invoices. If you have another software that you use to manage the invoices, they might get marked as paid and then you need to match the bank deposit to the received payment. So here you just want to make sure the date. Okay. The date of this bank fee transaction is August 22nd. The date of this credit card bill payment is also August 22nd. The amount matches 
that we're good to go. Just click match. You don't want to add, you want to match. If you add the transaction, it's going to create a duplicate. But don't worry, that's why we go through the reconciliation process so we can pick out those duplicates. You're not going to know it's a duplicate until you go through your reconciliation process. That's why as bookkeepers and accountants, it's so important. First step, categorize transactions. Second step, reconcile accounts. We have no idea if we accidentally add a duplicate transaction until we go to reconcile the accounts. A couple more things to note inside the QuickBooks bank feed. We have this update button right here. Pretty much every time I log into QuickBooks, I usually press this update button and this will update your bank accounts and credit cards in the QuickBooks bank feed. Be careful. Sometimes this will trigger a two factor authentication. So if you are working with a client, sometimes this will send a text message or an email to your client with a six digit code. So you might need to ask them, hey, could you share that code with me so that I can update your bank account in QuickBooks? You shouldn't have a problem with that as long as your client is able to get you the code. Last thing here, we have the option to export to Excel. I do this all the time. So I do this when I have a list of questions. Let's say, for example, I didn't know how to categorize these transactions. You can export to Excel and then these transactions get automatically exported into an Excel file and then you can send the Excel file to your customer or your, your bookkeeping client and you can say, hey, see attached, here's a list of questions, I'm not sure, could you give me some more information, who did you pay, what did you buy, that way I can accurately record your transactions. That's it guys, that's how you use the QuickBooks Online Bank Feed. One more thing I forgot to mention, if for whatever reason you are not able to connect your accounts to QuickBooks, that's okay. You have the option to upload from a file. All you need is the transactions in an Excel file, but it can't actually be an Excel file. It needs to be a CSV file or a .qbo file. All you need is the date, the description and the amount of each transaction. And then as long as it's in a CSV file, which if you have Microsoft Excel, you can save the Excel spreadsheet as a CSV file. So create a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, enter the date, description, and amount of every transaction, and then save that Excel spreadsheet as a .csv file. And then finally, if for whatever reason you can't connect the bank accounts to your QuickBooks bank feed, you might be able to log into the bank and export the transactions into an Excel file. If you can't do that, then unfortunately, you have to take the bank statements and manually convert them into an Excel file. That's it guys, that is a pretty detailed rundown of how to use the QuickBooks online bank feed.